and the Prime Minister's Prizes for Science are Australia's most prestigious awards for outstanding achievements in scientific research, research-based innovation and excellence in science teaching. The award for the Physical Scientist of the Year went to Dr Keith Bannister from the CSIRO. Dr Bannister's research on intergalactic radio waves is helping answer some of astronomy's biggest questions. He joins us live now from Sydney. Dr Bannister, firstly, congratulations on your award. You're probably beaming with pride today, I hope. Tell us a bit about how you carried out the research. I understand you were using radio telescopes from here in Australia and also around the world. Yeah, that's right. So uh, we used a telescope in Western Australia called the Australian Square Kilometre Array Pathfinder that's built by the CSIRO uh, and operated by the CSIRO. And we use that, uh, that telescope to find these bursts. They are bursts of radio waves that last a millisecond and they're gone. And then once we found one, we actually zoomed in on its location uh, in a galaxy and then we got in touch with our colleagues from around the world and used telescopes as far flung as Hawaii and Chile. To, uh, to find out really what we could find out about that particular burst at the time, yeah. And what did you find out? Do we know where the bursts come from and, and just how far away they are? Yeah, that's right. So uh, at the time, we, um, it was very hard to actually work out what type of galaxies these bursts came from. So uh, the, really pinpointing it to this particular type of galaxy told us a lot of information that we just didn't have before. But uh, also once we did that once and then we did it a few extra times, we were able to um, do a really neat trick where you can uh, you can work out how much matter there is in the universe by looking at each of these bursts and also measuring their distances. And when you do that, you could work out the amount of normal matter in the universe, which is you know a difficult number to measure. Um, astronomers are a bit good at losing matter, so uh, we at least were able to find some, and it turned out to be behind the couch or at least in the space between galaxies where we expected it to be. And so did you find that the majority of bursts are coming from a similar sort of location or are they actually spread right across the universe? Uh, yeah, so uh, we think that they come from, you know, uh, all sorts of distances uh, and right across the universe. It doesn't really matter which direction you look, you should be able to find these sorts of bursts. Uh, and But the interesting thing was that we, we found was that um, they actually come from all sorts of types of galaxies. So some really old galaxies and some, you know, brand new ones, some tiny galaxies and some big ones. And that's a really surprise because usually when we, uh, when we see these sorts of phenomena, we'd expect that, you know, the place that they come from or the place that they live tells you a little bit about the type of uh, object that made them. And what's really surprising, again, about these sorts of things is that uh, these bursts in particular is that they seem to come from all sorts of galaxies, which, uh, is, you know, poses another really interesting question about what kind of object can make them. That's still an open question for us. Yeah, and that's the big question, isn't it? I mean, what is producing these waves? How are these waves produced? What's your hypothesis? I mean, you must right. have thought about what's causing them. What's your best yeah. guess <laughs> after, you know, focusing so much of, of your time studying this sort of thing? Yeah, well, um, look, at one point there were more theories than there were actually, you know, bursts that had been detected. And um, that's only recently kind of changed. So, you know, there's a huge number of theories out there, out there about what, you know, what could be causing them. I think there's a few good, um, you know, candidates. Uh, one is a special type of star called a magnetar. That's a really magnetic star. So kind of, you can kind of wipe your credit card from, you know, kilometres, you know, millions of kilometres away. Uh, really, you know, a really magnetic star. And uh, they do really spectacular things. In fact, one of them, uh, there's a magnetar in the Milky Way that, you know, went bang and produced a very weak fast radio burst at the time, so that was a, a you know, uh, that's definitely a possibility. But also, you know, there's maybe other types of objects that can do that too. And um, that's going to be really, you know, an interesting, uh, you know, sleuthing or, or detective story that we need to work on in the next couple of years. So not aliens, is that what you're saying, Keith? Uh, <laughs> I don't think they're aliens. No, there's, there's, uh, you know, they all look, they look very much like a, a natural process as far as any, any kind of measurement that we can do. Um, there's lots of people, you know, in astronomy that are, you know, very keen to find uh, extraterrestrial life, um, but uh, you know, we haven't found any yet, sadly. It'd be nice to be a bit less lonely in the universe, wouldn't it? <laughs> Keep looking, Dr. Keith Bannister. Appreciate you joining us, and congratulations again. Thank you very much.